All right, so in this podcast, we are gonna get into a great question I had from actually a subscriber from our YouTube channel. Of course, this podcast we will upload also to our YouTube channel as well. You can catch us out in the links down below in the description for our podcast. But the question was, do food trucks do well in the winter? And then winter food truck menu ideas. Damien, can you help me out? I actually operate really, really well during the summer and springtime. Um, and this food truck uh, vendor actually uh, asked me about this to figure out what is a good thing to substitute during the winter and fall seasons, especially in the Northeast and out in the Midwest. A lot of times the winters can be long and super cold, which a lot of people aren't necessarily going to stand in line outside your food truck in order for them to get something to eat or drink. So what do you do if you've got a rolling kitchen, which in essence a food truck is? I'm going to dive into a couple of different things that you can actually think of as far as the menu. Uh, well, good way to winterize, I guess you want to say, your food truck menu, uh, some great ideas. And also, do food trucks do well during the winter? Yes, they can. They most certainly can. Now, it does take some planning, some advanced planning well before the actual winter and fall season starts. So in the beginning of your spring and summer uh, period, when you are actually um, selling your products through your food truck and doing very, very well, that needs to be the time where you need to plan ahead and kind of take some notes here on what I'm going to do. So uh, let's dive into the menu idea. So if, during the wintertime, food trucks may be doing salads or wraps or things that are healthy and vibrant and uh, smoothies and those types of things during those times as far as spring and summer is concerned. But winter comes around, if you're in an area where it obviously gets super cold or potentially even snowy throughout the year, what are you going to serve? And a lot of times it's really tricky because you're trying to figure out somebody's going to stand outside in the snow or sleet. Are they going to do that? And what are they going to what are they going to buy from you? So number one, you need to do something like chowders, chilies, or soups. Now, there's a couple of reasons why these come to mind. Number one, chowders, chilies, and soups are super obviously warm. Sorry about that. Super hot, super warm items. And you wanna make sure that you serve them in a individual to-go cup, obviously, with a lid on it, you've got spoon. It makes it easy for a few reasons. Number one, it's easy to transport and walk around with as you're eating it when it's snowy out or if it just happens to be cold out, maybe it's not snowing. Um, but they're easy to bake. They can be made well in advance and you can serve them up very quickly because you're not necessarily making them while the customer's waiting. You gotta keep that in mind too. If you do have a line and you do have, um, and during the winter time, you've got your food truck out and you're parked somewhere and you've got multitudes of people, you don't necessarily wanna sit there and cook like you would during a spring or summertime because those people were willing to wait for it. That's one thing. But during the winter time, they're not gonna really, really willing to do that. Chowders and chilies and soups are great because they can be made in advance. You basically spoon it up, put it in the, in the bowl, the to-go cup, you wrap it up, give them a spoon, give them a couple napkins, and you're done, right? So you can not only turn over a lot more business, but it's a fast and easy to serve product. That's the trick. These are things that you don't have to sit there and actually cook and make. Like when we had our Italian bakery and I used to make our panini sandwiches, we had this amazing, I loved it. It was a huge, beautiful commercial press, uh, panini press sandwich. And the machine was great, but it was not as fast, obviously, as it would be if something was pre-made. So people would wait in line. So I would see that kind of, you know, even, even inside of our bakery, you know, people waiting for a few minutes is good. But if it goes past that, just imagine having a customer in the wintertime standing outside with the snow and the sleet and stuff. They're not going to wait around a lot. So chowders, chilies, and soups. Come up with a variety of flavors and interchange that menu and have a variety of things to choose from. Next up, hot chocolates, hot teas, and hot coffee, obviously. These are ultra, ultra profitable products. These are easy to make, very simple. Um, the, the margins on hot teas and coffees are insane. I think there was a vendor who I was talking to once. He actually specialized in hot chocolates and teas and coffees. It was around 60 or 70% or more uh, for these type of products. Hot chocolates can be made in a huge quantity too as well, right? You can have it pre-made and basically serve it up as needed. Again, not a product that has to be made while people are waiting. That's the trick, that's the ticket. If you've got the weather outside and it's bad, people are not willing to stand there very long. So you wanna have a lot of stuff that's pre-made and pre-done. Next up, classic, very simple to make, can be made in bulk, mac and cheese. Chowders, chilies, soups, hot chocolates, hot teas, hot coffee, and mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is a favorite for everybody. You can actually make it in a multitude of ways. You can have a regular traditional classic mac and cheese and have a variety of toppings. If somebody wants to customize it, maybe some bacon on top, maybe some green onions, some scallions, maybe even take it up a notch to even shrimps, shrimp or even additional lobster or something like that. You can do crab meat and even charge a little premium for that. But hot mac and cheese is something too that's a comfort food, right? And it's also something that's hot and warm. That is something that you can do. So right off the top of my head, these are just a few things that really come to mind when you want to think about some products that are easy to make in advance, serve quickly, 
and get people in and out of that line really fast when the weather is bad. Now, do food trucks do well in the winter time? For business purposes, now I'm going to give you five different ways that you can use your truck in a way to make it useful year-round. Obviously, we know spring and summer are always going to be really good, right? Because you're going to have the flow of the traffic, et cetera. That's great. But number one is catering. You can cater events. You don't necessarily have to have your customers standing in the sleet and snow in order for you to utilize that rolling kitchen that you've got. Adapt or adopt some form of a catering menu and promote yourself. Again, spring and summer, you need to be planning this out prior to winter and fall, and you need to be hitting up the local events in the area that do weddings, that do bridal showers, that do uh, corporate events, and whatever it is, cater, cater, cater. You've got the equipment, create the menu for it, drive up, and serve your, your customers, serve your guests. So get into catering. And if you don't know how to cater, that's fine. You can start with one small event, build upon that and learn from it. And then little by little, you'll get larger events. But that is a way to bring in cash flow when you can't be in front of a beach or you can't be outside you know, um, uh, where, where the shore is and you've got these beautiful days and you've got hundreds of people lined up when it's hot and sunny. This is a way to, to use it. Okay, number two, adapt your menu. Like I mentioned before, again, back to what I was saying before about the winter food truck menu ideas, that is a great way. You need to adopt your menu. You need to change it, adapt, I'm sorry, not adopt, adapt your menu to change for the seasons. And you need to have that well in advance so you can get your ingredients, you get the cups, you get the utensils, whatever it is that you need as your menu changes with the seasons, that is a way to make money, obviously, year round, okay? Number three, this is so, so important. Not only just for winter and fall, but year round, to be honest with you, you need to foster in partnership with the community you live in. If it's companies, if it's churches, if it's local organizations, community groups, drive your truck around. Go around and meet people. Shake some hands. Introduce yourself. Within the community that you're in, building and fostering those relationships are going to be really fruitful during those, those seasons of fall and wintertime when you actually need to make that extra money to get through and push you to spring and summer. So partner with the community, reach out to them, local organizations. If there's a fun kids event, if there's a family event, if there's a health awareness, event, whatever it may be that is in the community, these events are going to pull you through the season and you definitely need to be aware of them, okay? Number four, employee turnover can be dramatic in the food industry period, no matter if it's spring or summer or fall or winter, but more so food trucks lose a lot of employees during the winter and fall time because they think obviously that your food truck is not going to be making the kind of money. So they're going to find another job because they need to make their bills. They need to make ends meet and pay their bills, right? So make your food truck inviting. And this is some interesting aspect that you may not have thought of. If you've got a good crew during spring and summer and you want them to last for fall and winter, make sure that your food truck obviously is warm. It's not something that's unpleasant to work in. Make the work environment in your food truck worth actually being there, okay? You need to hold on to those employees. If they're the ones who get you through spring and summer and they're going to push you through fall and winter, make sure that you take care of the crew that's taking care of you. You need to be able to make sure that your food truck is warm and inviting. It's easy to work in. It's fun to work with, no matter how the temperature is outside, okay? Because the more pleasant you make it for your employees, let's just face it, People don't want to work in a place that's miserable and, and horrible. They're not going to work, okay? So definitely look into that. Next up, number five, this is something that's really, really easy to implement and a lot of food truck drivers and entrepreneurs don't think about. But offer delivery. Team up with Uber Eats or DoorDash or whomever it may be in your community that you're in. You can have your truck set in one centralized location, preparing your meals. But in the wintertime, so you can have DoorDash become, or Uber Eats coming to your truck, delivering, taking a product, delivering it for you, going out. So team up with them. Figure out a way to get your app, get, it, get hooked up to the app in that local community to where you have the opportunity to be stationary with your truck and have the ability to have them deliver. Because during the winter and fall season, maybe you're not going to have a line a mile long. But you can open up your food truck and deliver your food to a community and maybe turn over a couple hundred plates a night. That's some pretty good money in the middle of what that, what's going on during that, that time of year. Okay, So number one, catering. Number two, adapt. Change your menu to meet the seasons. Number three, partner with your community. Make sure you reach out. Okay, Food trucks can do well during the wintertime. If you implement these, uh, implement all of them, not just one or two of them. Utilize all of these. Think outside the box and get creative and keep yourself busy. Number four, make sure your employees enjoy the work environment. Okay, Number five, delivery. Offering delivery services with your food truck is a no-brainer. I mean, uh, even during the spring and summer, to be honest with you, if that's something that you're able to do during that time frame and you've got a big line of people, 
hook up the, the Uber Eats or get the DoorDash, get them over there to get those products, those foods, and bring them to your customers. So this is a handful of ideas. Um, if you're you know asking your question about the winter food truck menu ideas, go with the chowders, go with the chilies, go with the mac and cheese, things that are comfort food, but they're warm, they're hot, and they're also easy to make in bulk. Okay, they're not something that has to be pieced together or take a long time to, to make. Scoop and serve, scoop and serve. And then lastly, the you know, do food trucks do well during the winter? Yes, they can. Those are great questions. Thank you guys for asking them so much. If you've got questions about your food truck business or if you are a food truck vendor, and some of these are things you've used, let us know down in the comments so maybe some of our subscribers for other food trucks, they can understand how that works. So I'll see you guys in our next video.